This is one of the most exciting places to play in the southeastern part of the country. I think we could call it the greatest football stadium in the southeast. I know that a lot of fans are going to be watching this game on television all around Central Kentucky, and among them is our Dave Baker. Right now, he is in Winchester at the Steakhouse, and David, I know they're going to be rooting for the Wildcats out there tonight. Well, Rob, a lot of people here are. You know, it's funny, Charlie being a coach, the mood here at the Steakhouse in Winchester, Rob, is a little bit like it is before a football game down in the locker room. You know, people are a little tense, things are starting to loosen up here a little bit, but I'm sure by the time the game starts that we're going to have uh, an absolutely crazy crowd on our hands tonight. You know, Charlie, a lot of people have their doubts about the Cats. We're going to be talking to fans later on. I'm sure the fans here are going to be pulling for Kentucky. But as far as the odds makers go, we don't know. The last word we got is the odds makers have LSU as a 13-and-a-half point favorite for Kentucky's first test on the road, and hopefully they can overcome that. As we said, we'll be back a little later to talk with some of the fans here at the Steakhouse in Winchester. Now, back to Baton Rouge and Rob Romley. All right, David, thank you very much. We're going to be back in just a moment. We're going to talk with both the head coaches, Jerry Stovall of LSU and Jerry Claiborne of Kentucky. We'll be back in just a moment. We'll continue. Stay with us. It's Kentucky against LSU. Back to Baton Rouge, where the LSU Tigers have just come out onto the field. And as I said a moment ago, LSU into this game with a record of 2-3. and three. The Tigers have dropped two in a row. They've lost to Florida, and they've lost to Tennessee. They want to right themselves in this football game here tonight. A little bit earlier in the week, they had a chance to visit with LSU head coach Jerry Stovall. Last season, LSU handled Kentucky with ease at Commonwealth Stadium. The final was 34 to 10. This year, big things were predicted for the Tigers, but they've had a lot of trouble getting the running game going. And that concerns coach Jerry Stovall. Well, we've got to be able to go out, in our opinion, run the ball for a couple hundred yards of ball game against everybody, knowing that there are going to be times when some people will go out and shirt, shut certain things down. It's like they're going to be sometimes we've got to throw the ball, they'll take a back or a particular receiver away. We acknowledge that people can do that. But when we play someone and they don't do it by themselves, when we help them, then that's a problem we have to correct. And I think give the, give the opponents the last two weeks credit with our running game. I think they have had a lot to do with it, but they don't deserve all the credit. We deserve an awful lot of responsibility as well that we've just not executed some things that we've executed extremely well for a year and a half. So it's not something that we, we wonder if we can do. We know we can do it, but as we see down after down after down where we do it. Certain plays in the ball game the other night, we took the football and ran it like it was, well, here it is, it's right back on track again. Then for the next three plays, you know, we'd gain a yard, lose two, gain three. And it just was not a consistent thing. So we've got to get right back on consistency with our running game. As for Kentucky, Jerry Stovall has never lost to the Wildcats, but he knows that this will be the best Kentucky team that he's had to face yet. We better get our running game in order because they're going to give you a split six and you got to block a lot of people. Uh, they're very good. They are very physical. Uh, Jerry Claiborne's an outstanding coach, as you well know. The biggest thing that's happened to them this year, I think, is just they started their season with four wins. Uh, they've built a lot of confidence. They believe in themselves and believe they can win. Uh, Kentucky always plays LSU tough. You always know that. So we're expecting good, hard, physical scoring for the ball game. Defense and offensively. Defense and offensively, they, they're very physical and aggressive, and we're going to be as well. Being physical is something that Stovall emphasizes all the time. In the last few games, he doesn't feel as though his team has been following through. I don't believe we've been getting a lot of movement because we've not been sustaining our blocks up front, and I don't think we've been very aggressive. And uh, I say that in that it's a small detail, but yet it's a very important detail. When you play good competition, you can go out against some other people and get by with that. But against good competition in our league, you can't do that. And it, it's uh, something that sometimes is very subtle. It, it reaches up and happens when you've not changed anything that you're doing you're not changing any attitude or any work habits it just bingo there it is and what you have to do is just maintain confidence and poise and continue to work through it and it's like a coal uh, you're conscious of it there it is and all of a sudden you wake up and it's gone and uh, we're working very hard to wake up Saturday and make sure it's gone all right there he is LSU head coach Jerry Stovall a very intense man a very competitive man but a man who also has a lot of compassion and in just a few minutes we're gonna see if his Tigers can wake up here at Tiger Stadium tonight. We got a lot more to come your way in a moment. We will hear from Kentucky head coach Jerry Claiborne. Stay with us. We're live in Baton Rouge. It's Kentucky against LSU. Two. These are two big factors that can affect a football team. And Rob Bromley went to discuss these things with Coach Jerry Claiborne. Kentucky had won its first four games, but then the Wildcats ran into Auburn last weekend at Commonwealth Stadium and they found out just how tough it would be in the Southeastern Conference. Auburn won it 49 to 21. 
Well, we we got back to fundamentals. We've been having tackling practice in, in our fundamental periods, and 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 we just turn out again. We're still not a strong fundamental football team. I think we've improved. We definitely have improved over last year, but we're still uh, missing uh, basic tackles and and not freeing a correct flipper and, and things of this nature defensively. Offensively, we're still getting our heads down and and uh, and looking like an ostrich trying to block people instead of getting our heads up and our butts down. And these are the things we're working on, plus our game plan. And uh, we feel like that we've got to go out and, and, and win a Southeastern Conference game. If we're going to play in this league, we've got to win in this league. If the Cats are to win at LSU, they must hold down two outstanding tailbacks, Dalton Hilliard and Gary James, and contend with LSU's strong-arm quarterback, Jeff Wickersham. He's completing the ball uh, passes at 60% of his throw, so I don't care whether you're a sophomore or a senior or what you are, when you're throwing the ball that accurate and hitting your receivers that consistently, uh, you're doing a fine job as a quarterback. And with Hilliard and James uh, in the ball game with them, uh, uh, run as well as they can run, and you got a fine offensive line, and, uh, and throwing the ball as well as he's throwing it. Uh, it, it makes them tough to defend against. I say uh, not many teams have stopped them. Defensively, LSU is led by nose guard Roland Barbe and linebacker Rydell Malonzon. And in the secondary, it's the speed of Jeffrey Dale and Lifford Hobley that concerns Jerry Claiborne. Their secondary is fast. Uh, that's the big thing about them. They're kind of like at Auburn defense. They all can run. The linemen, the, their backs, they all can run. And their secondary hasn't made that many tackles because not many people have gotten past their line, but their secondary has played a very good pass defense. So we're going to try to have a balanced attack, but I definitely feel like we probably have to throw the ball some in order to, to move it against them consistently. And what about playing in Tiger Stadium? Claiborne has been there before, and he's looking forward to it again. I think that those are the type of situations that a competitor when he goes down there and competes in a situation like that, uh, his, his adrenaline start, ought to start flowing as well as uh, our opponent, which will be LSU, because that crowd ought to fire us up as well as it does the, the home, home people. It's going to make you just that much more hungry. That's right. It, to, to me, in that type of atmosphere, uh, both teams ought to be excited and both teams ought to play a real fine football game. Well, that's how Jerry Claiborne sees it, and no doubt about it, I think we should see a really fine football game here tonight at Tiger Stadium. Well, right now, it's time to switch back to Winchester, where Dave Baker is standing by, and Dave, I bet they're getting warmed up over there. How's it going? They are getting warmed up, Rob. A lot of people here, fans of, fans of all ages. A uh, young man here with me right now, what's your name? Mike. Mike, where are you from? Mount Sterling. Big Kentucky fan? Yeah, of course. How do you think the cats are going to do tonight? Good. <laughs> you didn't sound real sure there. Yeah, they're, they're going to whip them. Okay. We've got fans all over here. Ted, if you could just follow me a little bit. Ted Mayer working with me this evening. We've got a lady over here, I understand. that has got a birthday tonight. I know she's a big blue fan. What's your name? Nancy. Nancy, where are you from? Winchester. Birthday today? Monday. Monday? Yeah. Would you like the cats to get a birthday win for you tonight? Yes. Okay, uh, Rob, we've got a lot of people here. Uh, we've got some people in the bar back here, a lot of men back here. Uh, any of you women missing husbands, they're probably back here in the bar. But we're going to continue previewing the Kentucky LSU game right after this. No. That wasn't so bad, no, was it? It seems like today so many things are the same And you might think there's no place to turn And similar to leaving doesn't think that way They're a little bit different They work with you personally Football has already been played this afternoon all around the country. Uh, some of the big games, Nebraska was in action, Texas was in action this afternoon. Certainly a big game at Legion Field in Birmingham where Alabama and Tennessee went at it. And to fill us in on all the scores, let's go back to Lexington right now and check in with Tim Smile. Tim? Thank you very much, Rob. Kentucky going into its game tonight with LSU, a two-touchdown underdog. So yeah. colors, we're getting ready for LSU against Kentucky. Tim Smile ran through the scores just a moment ago, Charlie. Of course, Nebraska struggled early and then one big against Missouri. What about that Tennessee-Alabama game, though? Tennessee's won two in a row now. Well, it's a big shot for Johnny Majors uh, as far as his job is concerned. I think he was starting to get in trouble down there. But I think the thing it does, it magnifies the job in front of these Kentucky uh, Wildcats tonight. Uh, LSU went down there and played a good, strong football game for about three quarters, and then Tennessee won it at Knoxville. So that shows exactly what, time of, uh, what type of football team that the Wildcats are facing this evening. 
Right now, let's go back to Winchester and check in with Dave Baker. And David, I know they're getting anxious for this football game to start, aren't they? All right, thank you very much, Rob. Uh, we're back here at Steakhouse in Winchester, and no, this is not a jail. The bars aren't here. Nobody's been thrown in jail yet. These are just some of the fellas creeping over from the bar. What's your name? Kenneth Johnson. Kenneth, you from Winchester? Yes, sir. What do you think about the game tonight? Kentucky's first game on the road. I like uh, LSU on the road. I do. You like those points? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I do. Who's your sailmate over here? Jack Oliver, Lexington. Jack, what do you think about the game tonight? I like Kentucky all the way. Even though it's their first road game? Absolutely. What what what, what makes you think that? They're just going to beat them. All right, let's get a lady's opinion. <laughs> I didn't mean to scare you. Didn't mean to wake you up or anything. What's your name? Carol Bonner. Carol, what do you think about the game tonight? I have no idea about the game. I'm a Western fan myself. <laughs> they, won their, they won their first one today. 17 nothing. They promise. Okay, Rob, that's the story from the Steakhouse here in Winchester. We're going to be back at halftime to talk to some of the armchair quarterbacks, see what they think about Coach Flavorn's calls. I haven't stuck my neck out this year, but I'm going to take Kentucky. 17 to 13 in an upset tonight. Let's have a going down there tonight, Rob. All right, now the LSU band is on the field entertaining here in the pregame activities. We are only about six or seven minutes away from kickoff, so stay with us. I think we're going to be in for a fun night. We'll be right back. We're live here in Baton Rouge as Kentucky takes on LSU. The Kentucky LSU football preview has been brought to you in part by Multimile Tire and Auto Center with seven Central Kentucky locations to serve you. Harbor Freight Tool Warehouse, Kentucky's finest tool center. Toyota of Lexington, 630 New Circle Road, 84 models now in stock. Consumer leasing, a little bit different. And it's University of Kentucky Wildcat Football. Live from Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge, the LSU Fighting Tigers versus the University of Kentucky Wildcats. Tonight's game is brought to you in part by Bush Beer. Come to the mountain. Come to Bush Beer. Distributed locally by Benny Robinson Company. Conrad Chevrolet, Kentucky's number one Chevy dealer. Valvoline Oil Company. Valvoline, your symbol of protection in automotive products. And the Bank of Lexington, the bank with human interest. stadium is jam-packed. I do not see an empty seat anywhere. Here in Baton Rouge, it was an absolutely beautiful day and late in the afternoon. It clouded over just a little bit. We had some light sprinkles early this evening, Charlie, but I think the rain is going to hold off. I think it's gone. We're picking up a little breeze uh, right now. It'll be from the right to the left as I tell the cameras see it. This is just electricity all over the place, Rob. What a, just a fantastic place to be a part of, to be a part of a football game, the fans, the whole show in itself. Well, there's the LSU marching band right at the center of the field. They've just concluded their pregame activities, and in just a moment, the captains will go to the center of the field, and at that time, we'll have the toss of the coin. We are live here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, as Kentucky takes on LSU. We'll be back with the toss of the coin, and then the opening kickoff in just a moment. Stay with us. captains at the center of the field. Kentucky, I believe Charlie, has just won the toss and is elected to go with the second half option, just as the Wildcats did last week. That is correct, Rob, and I think that's a good decision. There is a little win here, of course. Uh, for some reason, it looks to me as though Kentucky got the win. That's kind of a surprise, but I guess LSU did want to take the football at this time. All right, LSU will get the football first. Kentucky will be kicking off from right to left. The officials for our game tonight, the referee is John Cook, the umpire A.C. Lambert, the linesman is Joe Curtis, the line judge Richard Long, the field judge John Fleming, the back judge is Bobby Skelton, and the clock operator here at Tiger Stadium is Don Shanks. There is the series record, LSU leading it, 24-8-1. Jerry Claiborne has yet to beat the Tigers. He lost to them at Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington last year by a count of 34-10. And Charlie, the memory of Kentucky's last win over this Tiger team is still very much settled in my mind. It goes back to 1977. The Wildcats won down here 33 to 13. 
I can still see Art still blocking that kick, running it back for a touchdown. Dallas Owens intercepting that pass, running it back 80 yards for a touchdown. That was quite a night for Kentucky. Well, I think the names that you mentioned there are some synonymous of what will have to happen. Defense has to win in Tiger Stadium. It's very hard for an offensive football team to win here. Your defense has to create turnovers, get your uh, offense good field position, and at that time, give them a chance to take it in and quieten this crowd off a little bit. Now going back deep, there is Gary James wearing number 33. He is one of the LSU deep men. Also going back there is number eight, Norman Jefferson. And Chris Caudell has the football teed up at the 40-yard line. We're set to get underway. And we're so happy that you've joined us tonight on Channel 27. End over end kick going back into the end zone and hits out of bounds. Now they rule that it went on into the end, end zone, Charlie, and I believe they'll bring it back out of the 20-yard line, and that's where LSU will put it in play. Well, it crossed the goal line before it went out, and that would make it a touchback right there. And it's a great thing to start off right here. There was no chance for any type of kickoff return, so you've given the LSU Tigers 80 yards of real estate to cover. Now Tommy Campbell will be over the ball at center. The split end is a good one. Eric Martin, Clint Berry there on the offensive line, along with Jeff Fordham, Kevin Langford, Lance Smith, Mitch Andrews, the tight end, the quarterback, the sophomore, Jeff Wickersham, Dalton Hilliard, Gene Lang, and Herman Fontenot are the running backs. It is first and 10 Tigers for the 20. Here's the first play of the game. And they hand it off to Dalton Hilliard straight on up the middle. He is tripped up, but he gets about three yards. Well, I think you had to suspect after what Auburn did to this Kentucky defense up the middle last week that they very well would come stringing it up right, right up the middle like that. There's Kentucky's defensive line. Glenn Amerson, number 43 at left guard. Jeff Smith, the left tackle. Stacy Burrell is there. The linebackers, John Grimsley and Kevin McClellan. There's the defensive backfield. Gordon Jackson, Kerry Baird, Paul Calhoun. Second down, seven yards to go for the Tigers. Here is Wickersham to throw. He gets it away to Hilliard. Golden Hilliard over the 25 and comes up to about the 28-yard line where Scott Schroeder hit him and brought him down. Going to be a couple of yards short of a first down. It'll be third down coming up in short yardage, third down, about a yard to go. Well, he slipped a little screen pass out on the left side to Dalton Hilliard, and he did an excellent job of running. He had a big wave of blockers. The defense came late, but they did pursue, held him short of the first down. Big play already in this ball game, Rob. Third down and one, LSU from its own 29. Dalton Hilliard, he's got the first down. Falls forward to about the 31, 32-yard line. Keith Martin was the man who hit him low. Stacy Burrell was also right there, but the gain is to the 32. LSU runs three plays and posts a first down. First and 10 Tigers. Well, Kevin McClellan had a shot at him in the backfield, Rob, and just missed him. He had real, real good penetration. Junius Terrell brought the play in from the bench. First and 10 from the 32-yard line. Wickersham intercepted by Terry Baird. Baird will bring it back for a touchdown. Terry Baird runs it back about 30 yards. Jeff Wickersham is intercepted. Well, I tell you what, he made a great move that time, Rob. They had a roll strong coverage. He had backed up a couple of steps. Beautiful to, uh, job of just hiding the coverage until the last possible second. He was rolling forward, and Wickersham never saw him. Oh, what a thrill for Terry Parrott. There he is, the senior out of Franklin, Kentucky. What a personable young man. Six feet, 191 pounds. Well, Kentucky strikes first, and a big, big break for the Wildcats here in the early going. Chris Caudell on to attempt the extra point. He booms it through the upright. So Kentucky has drawn first blood with 13.25 to go in the first quarter. Kentucky breaks on top, 7-0 over the Tigers of LSU. Well, we've got Southeastern Conference action here in Baton Rouge tonight, but we want to be sure that you will join us next Saturday at 12.30 for the live telecast of the Eastern Kentucky-Western Kentucky game. That'll be from Hangar Field in Richmond, Eastern against Western, next Saturday at 12.30, right here on Channel 27. I tell you, that is a great, great play by Kerry Baird, and certainly one very deserving. He's worked hard this year, Rob, and he's had a couple of situations where he's had passes bounce right out of his hand. This time, well played, went up high, caught it in his chest, and carried it right on in the end zone. 
Well, it wasn't 80 or 81 yards like Dallas Owens a few years ago, but it's good enough, good enough for the seven points. It, yeah, that's exactly right. It counts the same amount, and I tell you, I told you defense has to win down here, and if they can continue to play like this, they'll keep this crowd fighting down a little bit. All right, for the second time tonight, Chris Caudell has the football teed up at the 40, and he will kick off as Kentucky now holds a 7 to nothing lead. Again, Cartel sails it deep into the end zone. It is back over the head of Norman Jefferson and out of play, and that's what Jerry Claiborne likes to see. Once again, LSU will have to start at the 20-yard line. Well, an 80 start, uh, yards of real estate is a long, long way to go. Jeff Wickersham heading out onto the field. He's had some great games just recently against Florida State, against Florida, and against Washington. He threw for 274 yards against Florida State, 271 against Florida, 259 against Washington. He's been intercepted, though, now nine times. Gary James has come into the tailback spot for the Tigers. He is hit and dropped by Stacy Burrell after a gain of about a yard and a half. Now the gain is up across the 22-yard line. We're going to call it second out coming up, seven yards to go. Rob, they've been very disappointed in their uh, running attack to this stage in the year. They thought that their offensive line was a strong point. The last two games, their uh, two great tailbacks have only gotten about 50 yards together. Second down. Seven yards to go for LSU. That was James in motion. They like to throw to him. Down the middle, this one is caught by Eric Martin. He's got the first down. John Grimsley is right there to wrap him up. But Eric Martin, the junior out of Van Fleck, Texas, he's the leading receiver on this LSU team and stands third on the LSU career list for yardage and receptions, 1,307 yards. Here it is again. Well, it was a nice little delay. They set uh, Dalton Hilliard up the seam that time to clear the area, move the linebacker, and brought the outside receiver back underneath. Excellent game plan. First and 10 Tigers. They've got it now at their own 32-yard line. And they hand it off straight up the middle, nowhere to run. Handoff went to number 13, that's Craig Raskin. John Grimsley was right there to bring him down. Now, Rob, they have a definite thing in mind as they start that motion. First of all, they hit the pass, then they came back with a fullback trap. They are definitely trying in this particular situation to work the weak side area of the Kentucky defense into the sideline. Well, that play lost about a yard. We'll call it second down, 11 yards to go. Junius Terrell in motion here to the near side as Wickersham hands it off on the draw. That is Raskin. Raskin's across the 35, up to about the 38-yard line. Kevin McClellan in on the tackle. Going to be third down coming up, though. Third down and about five yards to go. Raskin is a freshman. He's out of Houston, Texas, 6'3", 205 pounds. They mark it just shy of the 39-yard line. Third down, we'll call it a long four yards for LSU. Eric Martin comes out of the right. Herman Fontenot goes to the left. Wing right. And here is Wickersham to put it up. Over the middle, it's taken in by Gary James, but he is hit and dropped immediately. Short of the first down, I'd say by a couple of yards or so. It is short. Again, they're trying to work up underneath all the time in this situation. They see the Kentucky defense playing too deep. Five underneath the zone. They're trying to clear out one zone or the other and then coming right up underneath, Rob. Kentucky player is down on the field, Charlie, and I could not pick up the number. I'm sorry. I have not been able to pick it up either, but there were three people that really threw their body in there strongly in, in an effort to stop LSU and make sure they did not make the first down. Well, as soon as we can pick it up, we will pass it along to you. But there is the Kentucky sideline with assistant coach Bill Glazer, Jerry Claiborne, right there in the shirt sleeves. Temperature must have been up in the upper 70s, close to 80 here today. It's cooled off considerably at night, but it's still very, very pleasant as you look at the Kentucky bench. Jerry Claiborne, 10 fine years at Virginia Tech, 10 outstanding years at Maryland, took them to seven bowl games, rebuilding here at Kentucky. As John Grimsley is now on his feet, and he has gone off the field. Apparently, John is all right. Clay Parker into the game to do the punting. He's averaging just over 40 yards a kick. He has been a little bit inconsistent this season. That's been one of the Tigers' problems. Brian Williams standing back around his 20-yard line to return it. Parker gets the kick away. 
spiraling boot. Williams calls for a fair catch. And it's all the way back around the 16-yard line. All right, we got a timeout on the field with a score. Kentucky 7, LSU nothing. Don't you think Kentucky on first and 10. The Wildcats moving from their own 16-yard line, and they handed it off to George Adams. He brought it up to around the 20-yard line. They're going to mark it right on the 20. It's going to be second down, six yards to go in Kentucky now. Going without a huddle. And they pitch it on back to George Adams. He busts across the 25, and Charlie, I think he's got a first down. Kentucky going without a huddle on its second offensive play of the game. Well, I believe they're going. No, they did call it a first down, and we knew that that play was coming on the second play of the game. This is something that Coach Jerry Eisenman had told us. It's an old, old play. goes back in the 1920s, but very effective, and that was an important first down for this Kentucky offense. Now they need to take it and just drive it down the field. It's just shy of the 27-yard line. First and 10 for the Wildcats. Shifting in the backfield now. Kirk Cochran, the fullback, the lone man behind Randy Jenkins. Handoff goes to Choo Choo Lee. He is tripped up and dropped by Rydell Malonzon, the outside linebacker and one of the outstanding players on this LSU defense. The gain is to the 29. It'll be second down coming up about eight yards to go as George Adams comes back into the Kentucky lineup and Choo Choo Lee goes on up. Rob, they're lucky they tripped him. He had a gigantic hole. He would have made at least 10 or 15 more yards had he cleared the line of scrimmage there. Second down and eight from the 29. Joker Phillips goes out of the right. The handoff to Adams. Falling across the 30-yard line, but he was tripped up by Roland Barbe, the nose guard, number 77, a sophomore out of Chalmette, Louisiana. He's a big guy, 6'4", 250. Well, they had to play where they wanted it, outside. He was able to break it outside, but the center did not control the nose man. Uh, with the outstanding nose man that LSU has, they may have to give the center some help. They may have to make some, uh, some adjustments in their blocking schemes. Kentucky with third down. Six yards to go. Big play for the Wildcats as they work from their own 31 here in the first quarter. Kentucky leading it 7-0. Jenkins to put it up. And it's intercepted. It was intended for Oliver White, but Rodell Malonzon, the senior out of Vacher, Louisiana, comes up with the football. Well, that's two passes thrown, or uh, one each for Kentucky and one each for LSU. It looks like to me the tight end stopped on him. I really can't tell here. He had Oliver White there. Watch him stop. I don't know why he stopped, because he was leading him right in the area, and then the interception was made. Well, in case you've just joined us, Kerry Baird intercepted a Jeff Wickersham pass and ran it back for a touchdown a little bit earlier. Now LSU comes up with an interception. That's the fourth time Jenkins has been intercepted this season. Wickersham on first and ten incomplete. He was trying to get it to Dalton Hilliard, number 21, coming out of the backfield. And Wickersham likes to throw to Hilliard, and he likes to throw to Gary James coming out of the backfield. They do a, a great job of utilizing their backs, and I think you saw another facet of Jeff Wickersham there that the Kentucky Wildcats have to be very conscious of, and that's his ability to get back in the pocket and then scramble. Coming into this game, Wickersham had completed just over 60%, 79 of 131. Second and 10 from the Kentucky 40. Down the middle, this one is caught by the tight end, Mitch Andrews. Scott Schroeder on the coverage for Kentucky. But the gain is down to the 33-yard line. Going to be about three, three and a half yards short of a first down as you look at LSU's offensive line. And here is Wickersham again, Charlie. Well, just a little tight end delay here. They cleared out with a back, worked the tight end right back underneath him and over the middle in front of the linebacker, Scott Schroeder. The ball is spotted at the 33. Third down, three yards to go. LSU in Kentucky territory. And Wickersham right back to the air. This one to Hilliard. He's got the first down. Inside the 25, inside the 20-yard line. Brian Williams was there to bring him down. Russell Harrison also went on the tackle, but the gain is down to the Kentucky 18. It's a first and 10 for LSU. Well, the only way they're going to keep those backs in there is to blitz every now and then. Watch this. They cleared out with a tight end and the fullback on the other side. Brought Gary James back underneath. There, Scott Schroeder got picked off. He's chasing him. And then came Brian Williams to put the stop on. First and 10 LSU from the 18. Hilliard again, busting his way forward down to the 15-yard line. 
Well, there's no doubt about it, Charlie. Dalton Hilliard is a good one. As a freshman here, he rushed for 901 yards, had five games over 100 yards or more, 16 touchdowns. Early this season, he suffered a bruise shin against Florida State, but apparently now he's back to 100% as Herman Fontenot comes in with the play from the LSU bench. Well, he's certainly an all-SEC performer and, and uh, has a great, great future in front of him here. And he's one of the young men that Kentucky has to shut down tonight to have a chance in this game. It is second down and seven from the 15. Wickersham got it away to Hilliard. He tried to pull it in with one hand. Well, Rob, he was very lucky he dropped that football because Brian Williams and Paul Calhoun both were breathing right down his neck. That pass would have been completed for about a six or seven yard loss. Now we have six minutes and 38 seconds left to go in the first quarter here at Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge. Kentucky leading LSU by a score of 7 to nothing. In the opening minutes of the ball game, Kerry Baird intercepted a Jeff Wickersham pass, returned at about 30 yards for a Kentucky touchdown, and that's where we stand. But LSU trying to even things up. Third down and seven. Wickersham under pressure, gets it away, and now overthrows Mitch Andrews. Junius Durrell, number 82, was cutting across in the end zone, and it'll bring up fourth down. LSU will have to go for the field goal. Well, he had it there. He just missed it, Rob. He had two men open in the end zone, just overthrew him. Jeff Wickersham going to the sidelines, and Juan Carlos Patanzas, a junior who was born in Mexico City, has come onto the field to attempt a field goal. He holds the LSU record 43 straight extra points. He's kicked 14 to 15 extra points thus far this season, six of seven field goals. He's a good one. Kicked a 51-yarder last season against Rice. They spot it down at the 22. It's a 32-yard attempt. He kicks it very, very it. high, and it goes off to the left. Well, that's a big bullet to dodge right there, Rob. Well, how do you like that? There's a timeout on the field with the score. Kentucky 7. Sale going on now. On first and 10 from the 20-yard line, the handoff went to George Adams, and he had absolutely no running room here to the near side of the field. Well, there was that. Uh, again, he had the outside break, but that time the tackle came off of his block late and made the play. Watch, we have a replay right here. They're telling him to break the play outside. He starts up inside, breaks outside, and there's your big defensive tackle coming down the line to just catch him at the last second. Well, that is number 95. That is Clarence Osborne, the freshman from Baton Rouge, 6'4", 237. Second and 10 from the 20, as Kentucky leads LSU 7-0 here in the first quarter. George Adams gets some running room off the right side, comes over the 25-yard line up to about the 26. The linebacker, Toby Caston, was there to bring him down. He's a freshman from Monroe, Louisiana. Rob, the one thing you don't want to do right here is give the LSU Tigers two chances in a row. They want to make sure that they do not throw an interception. Chances are they'll run this football or use a safe sprint out type pass where he can control his own destiny. Good look at George Adams, who starred, of course, at Lafayette High School in Lexington. Now is having a fine career at the University of Kentucky. Third down play, third down and three yards to go. Adams trying to make it up to the 30-yard line, and I do not believe he got there. Shooting in there, Toby Caston, the man who made the tackle on the last play. The freshman tripped him up, and Kentucky comes up short. Fine defensive play by Toby Caston. Well, the linebackers, every time they pull so far, and, and the action has been straight ahead, the linebackers have plugged where the guards pulled, and he came completely clean that time. Had he not been there, I think George would have made the first down easy. Well, Paul Calhoun is into the game to do the punting, and he's been one of the real bright spots for Jerry Claiborne. Averaging 44 and a half yards a kick. Back to return it, number eight, Norman Jefferson. And right now, he's signaling for a fair catch. Sure, oh, it almost got by him, but he pulled it in at the 27-yard line. So LSU will take over, first and 10 at its own 27, as we have four minutes and 23 Bob, seconds. Don't be surprised if LSU comes back and tries to block the next no punt. They had a lot of penetration on that last one. Gary James is in at the tailback spot, and he gets the handoff, breaking a tackle to the outside. That was Stacy Burrell who finally knocked him down. But Gary James giving it a good effort as he comes up to about the 33-yard line or so. You might remember last season at Commonwealth Stadium, James wore 23, but now 33 is opened up, and that's the number he wants to put on his back. He's another great tailback. Well, he certainly showed it on that play. That was an inside play design-wise. He bounced it all the way and made a sweep out of it. Here he comes again. And a handoff to James. Fighting his way forward, he should have enough for the first down. Let's wait and see where they mark it. 
First and 10 LSU as John Grimsley made the tackle for Kentucky. Gary James is averaging 4.1 a carry. Dalton Hilliard 4.7. I think the real problem for this LSU offense, Charlie, he's been on that offensive line. Well, they have had problems there. They've had some injuries and have not performed as they were expected. They should be averaged at about 250 or 60 yards rushing each game instead of 125 or so. First and 10 from the 37. And they hand it off to Rathjen on the draw, straight on up the middle. He takes it across the 40, gets good yardage up to the 43-yard line. Big gain of about five yards. It'll be second down coming up as Jeff Wickersham gets the play from the sidelines. They mark it between the 43 and 44-yard lines. Second down, we'll call it five yards to go. Double wide receivers now for LSU out of the left. And they hand it off to Dalton Hilliard. And Hilliard spins forward. He should have enough for the first down. John Grimsley was in there on the tackle along with Kevin McCulloch. Well, I think that has to be their game plan at this time. They have to feel like they are a little bit stronger in the offensive line than Kentucky is in the defensive line. Kentucky is last in the SEC in rushing defense, Rob, so they have to feel like they can run the football tonight. It's another LSU first down. First and 10 Tigers, they've got it at their own 48. Kentucky leading in the football game, 7 to nothing. Wickersham throwing to Hilliard. Grimsley and Burrell, they're on the coverage, but the gain is across the Kentucky 45-yard line. Going to be a little bit short of a first down. Let's take a look at it, Charlie. Well, they're just working this, these good running backs. Now they're pass receivers. They're just working them one-on-one. -on -one. That was John Grimsley trying to cover him. And then Stacy Burrell comes back in and helps him out. They really utilize their tailbacks in their offense, uh, catching the ball and running. Gain of seven. It is second down and three. And here is Hilliard. And John Grimsley is the man who meets him head on. Stop by Grimsley. Gain of about a yard. Well, what can you say about John Grimsley? He's been Kentucky's leading tackler the last two seasons. And for the third season, well, watch he him. is Kentucky's leading tackler. Watch him just really nail him to the wall right here. Whap, knocks him back. That's, that's two things. That's being embarrassed because he let him catch the ball on the pass play before. And the other thing is a lot of weight lifting. He has that strength that he can hit people and turn them around now. It's just shy of the 42. Third down, a yard to go for LSU as Fontenot goes in motion. Wickersham's going to put it up. And Gene Lang was wide open. And he will never forgive himself for that one. On third down and short yardage, Wickersham trying to hit his fullback, Gene Lang, the senior from past Christiane, Mississippi. And Charlie, he just dropped it. He just tried to run with it. He was so wide open, he tried to run with it before he caught it. Watch this. Good play action fake. He's got a man going deep, and two of the Kentucky defenders went with him. Wickersham lays the ball right in. Lang drops it, and he very well could have scored. It would have taken a good tackle down around the 15-yard line. Clay Parker now, the barefooted putter, kicks this one high in the air. Brian Williams is back there, but he won't have a chance to return it. This is a good kick. Yes, it is. Out on the 10-yard line. Ball rolled just across the 10. Now they're going to mark it right at the 10-yard line. Fine punt by Clay Parker. Their own 10. But, of course, Kentucky has the interception return by Kerry Baird and leads in this game 7-0 with just over a minute to go in the first quarter. And here's Randy Jenkins changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Choo-choo Lee gets the handoff, and he has nowhere to go. The big man was right there to hit him, Clarence Osborne, the right side defensive tackle, the freshman from Baton Rouge. And I'll tell you, Choo-choo Lee never had a chance. No, he didn't. I think we're going to have a...